One Med Radio welcomes Cynthia Nolte, Director of Medical Device Regulatory Services with Aptive Solutions. Aptive Solutions will be a sponsor at the upcoming One Med Forum New York 2013, taking place at the Metropolitan Club June 26th and June 27th. Today we'll be discussing the regulatory landscape, globalization of drug development, and the novel technology that's driving new strategies for clinical trial implementation. So thank you for joining us, Cynthia. Thank you very much, Matt. What kind of services does Aptive provide, and who are your clients? Aptive Solutions is a full-service CRO. Over the years, we have developed proven expertise in supporting projects for biopharmaceutical and also medical device companies. Our project involvement spans a development life cycle from feasibility work through regulatory approval. We have 850 professionals all over the globe that are proud to call themselves Aptive Solutions employees. Our clients are both small and large companies. We enjoy working with small companies, helping to develop their new and cutting-edge technologies, and we also have a number of clients who are established market leaders, helping them manage their workload and supporting their explorations into new markets. I'm, I'm in my 18th year at Aptive Solutions, spent my entire uh, career in regulatory affairs at Aptive Solutions, climbing the ladder in uh, medical device regulatory. Like many Active Solutions consultants, I come from regulated industry, and I think it's very beneficial that we're able to apply a very broad breadth of technical expertise and understanding of best practices of scientific research to our consulting projects. To go into some detail about what an adaptive clinical trial is, what are some essential concepts for success? Active Solutions is a world leader in the use of adaptive design to run smarter, more efficient clinical trials. Adaptive design is just what the name implies, uh, using accumulated data from an ongoing study to modify uh, critical aspects of the study. When this is done properly, the validity and integrity of the study is maintained. So a study that utilizes an adaptive design is more facile it allows uh, the sponsor uh, to implement one or more pre-planned adaptations depending on the data that's collected for an interim analysis. So some examples of these pre-planned adaptations could be the number of subjects, the duration of the study, the duration of a particular treatment, something like that. So I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about the mobile health space. Firstly, how is the FDA's certified plans for mobile health app regulation changed? Well, what you've heard FDA say is that they've been regulating mobile health applications or precursors of the current mobile health applications for some time. I see FDA as responding to the mobile health industry by attempting to put in place a consistent and predictable and scientifically rigorous approach to the regulation of medical devices in an industry, the uh, mobile health application industry, where innovation is accelerating at a rapid pace. The basic framework for medical device regulations has existed since the 1970s, and FDA is now helping or trying to help the mobile health application industry understand how these rules created in the uh, 1970s apply to their industry. Do you believe that FDA guidelines for health IT and mobile health apps reflect what physicians and hospitals want to see? FDA's perspective on a situation is, is a little bit different than that of a physician or, or hospital because they see their mission as being to protect the public health. So whereas a physician and a hospital, their goal is to introduce a particular application with features that physicians and hospitals uh, would like to use, and then it's FDA's job, when it's applicable, when the application is truly a medical device, to make sure that that application uh, can be safely and effectively used by patients. So it's a little bit different perspective. So someone submitting an application to FDA for a particular mobile health app, uh, uh, they're going to put forward the claims that they know the hospital and physician would like to see in their particular uh, product, and then it's FDA's goal to make sure that this can be done safely and effectively. 
Interesting. And so how are trials for mobile health tools actually designed, and how does it differ from biotech and traditional pharma? Well, at the core, I don't think that a clinical trial that's designed for a mobile health application is, would be any different than for a biotech or a traditional pharma tool. Good clinical practices are adopted by all sponsors of all sorts of clinical studies. However, it is true that new safety and effectiveness issues arise for a mobile health tool. The issues of patient accessibility, information integrity and security, and the ability of users to properly operate a mobile health tool and interpret the information coming from that tool are different than the issues that arise with something like a syringe or a pill. There's been a lot of criticism that the FDA is taking a hard line against these mobile health apps that going over-regulating, perhaps. Do you think that there may be a chilling effect for this industry? I think that FDA's guidelines will continue to frustrate those moving forward with mobile medical applications where the, the sponsors or the developers of these applications don't understand the applicable medical device regulations. FDA is not saying we won't allow any mobile medical applications to reach the market. That, that's not what they're saying. What they're saying is if your product is actually a medical device, then it will need to be regulated under the same framework of regulations that any other medical device, software medical device, is regulated. I think once the industry becomes more familiar with the guidelines, and there are more examples of companies who have successfully navigated the FDA roadmap, I think that we're going to see this concern about a chill, a bait. I do think that the excessive amount of time that FDA is taking to finalize the guidance adds fuel to the fire. I think everybody agrees that the best thing that FDA could do is to expedite the finalization of the guidance. Uh, but all industries are frustrated by the lengthy period of time that it takes the FDA to uh, introduce an, a new guidance. How has globalization of clinical trials affected the regulatory side? FDA issued a guidance in 2001 focusing on, on how they intended to handle or how they currently handled at that time foreign clinical data. And I think that guidance still generally applies. The challenge that current regulators face continues to be ensuring that patient privacy and safety is protected and that the data is being collected in a scientifically rigorous and un unbiased manner. And as more and more uh, countries are being involved in a, the clinical trial process, the mandates to uh, maintain patient privacy and safety are more of a challenge for the sponsors of clinical trials to ensure. So how does Aptive Solutions assist in healthcare companies that are seeking to perform clinical trials abroad? We benefit from the fact that we have boots and heels on the ground in a number of, of different countries across the globe. And we have a very excellent team approach to projects. So we have a broad expertise in a large variety of pharmaceutical combination product and medical devices. Cynthia, what case studies can you point to of successful health information technology that has navigated the FDA? Well, if we're talking about devices like those kinds of mobile medical health apps that are so popular and that have such interest today, I have seen throughout my career many pre-market clearances, meaning reaching the market via FDA's 510K process for multi-component medical device systems where the different components exchange information with each other and also with the outside world. Some of these are what we called in 2008 telehealth systems that collect information from different medical monitoring devices and display this information and communicate that data to the outside world. In the case of something that is categorized as a mobile medical app, the figure more than 75 has been touted in the press. Many of these involve chronic disease management, like some sort of digital logbook for tracking your glucose uh, monitoring data. 
there has been a lot of work in this space for ECG devices where uh, folks will wear their Holter monitor, collect data on an electrode patch, and then that data is broadcast out to, transmitted out to a remote monitoring station. There are also a lot of vital signs monitoring apps and imaging apps that have reached uh, FDA via the 510K process, and Aptive Solutions has participated in a number of these projects. One of the most recent clearances, which Aptive Solutions can't claim, but certainly is a very innovative product, is something called My Vision Track. And this is a, a handheld, prescription-only medical device provided as an app for an iPhone that received clearance in March of 2013. And it's marketed as an at-home method for monitoring the progression of degenerative eye disease. Important takeaways from this project from uh, outside uh, are a clinical study was required, and each platform, be it an iPhone or Android or any platform, FDA would expect to see evaluated separately. I don't think that means you have to go all the way back to the clinic, but I do think that it means every platform FDA would consider a separate medical device and you would have to do your due diligence in terms of looking at the ability of this mobile platform to support the software. This approach for the My Vision Track is no different than the approach that FDA has applied to any other type of medical device that is making claims for adjunctive monitoring of progression of a disease. That was Cynthia Nolte, Director of Medical Device Regulatory Services with Aptive Solutions, offering perspective on the state of regulatory for mobile health and clinical trial guidelines. With OneMed Radio, this is Matthew Margolis, signing off.